Hello friends, welcome to Mind Your Math YouTube channel. This is your Skona Karan Reddy. In this video, I want to explain the solutions of the questions given in Kaushal Quiz 2022 conducted at school level. I restricted my explanations to mathematics only. Right, let us go through the problems. Second problem. Which of the following algebraic expression is not a polynomial? So what is considered as a polynomial? A mathematical expression with constants and variables connected with the mathematical operators is considered as a polynomial when the variables have non-negative integral exponents. So here, if you observe first one, a 2x square minus 1. So this is clearly a polynomial. B, you see here, this is equal to, we can write this one as x square minus 1 by x square can be written as x power negative 2. Here the exponent is negative. So this is not a polynomial. So option B is correct. Next question number 3. If one angle of a linear pair is acute, then its other angle will be. First of all, what is a linear pair? Suppose if you have a line, the angles formed here, you see here, this is suppose A, this is B. Here A and B are said to be linear pair. Here in this case, if you observe A plus B equal to how much? That will be equal to 180 degrees. So if one angle A, suppose A is acute, then B must be obtuse. Why? Because suppose if you take an example, suppose if you take A equal to 80 degree, to get the sum equal to 180 degrees, B must be 100 degrees, which is obtuse angle. So in this case, option B is correct. Let us go to fourth problem. The two lines A, B and C, D intersect at O. Let us draw two lines like this. Suppose this is A, B and this is C, D. Now these two are intersecting at O. Now angle A, O, C, angle A, O, C, this one, plus angle C, O, B, this angle, plus angle B, O, D, this angle, so these three equal to, sum of these three equal to 270 degrees. Then angle AOC equal to how much? To solve this problem, let us take angle AOC equal to X. So then angle BOD will also be equal to X. Why? These are vertically opposite angles. Similarly, if you take angle BOC as Y, then here this other angle, the vertically opposite angle, this also will be equal to Y. Now the sum of all these four angles will be equal to 360 degrees. So two x's are there. So two x plus two y equal to 360 degrees. That means x plus y equal to how much? 180 degrees. Let us take this as equation number one. Now given that angle AOC plus angle COB plus angle BOD equal to 270. So angle AOC means x plus angle COB is y. Angle BOD is again x. This is equal to 270 degrees. Now if you observe x plus x, 2x, 2x plus y equal to 270 degrees. Now let us write equation 1 here. So that will be x plus y equal to 180 degrees. Subtract. If you subtract here minus, 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 y minus y gets cancelled. 2x minus x is x equal to 270 minus 180 means that is 90 degrees. So angle x equal to 90 degrees. Angle X is nothing but angle AOC, you see the diagram. So that will be equal to how much? 90 degrees. So option D is correct. Let us go to next problem. The statement which is neither proved nor disproved is called. That is conjecture. We know that a statement which is neither proved nor disproved is a conjecture. So option C is correct. Next problem, problem number 6. If root 2 equal to 1.414, then what is the value of 1 by root 2? So we need to find out 1 by root 2 given the value of root 2. First, let us rationalize the denominator. So 1 by root 2, multiply both numerator and denominator with root 2. So that will be equal to 1 into root 2 becomes root 2 divided by root 2 into root 2 means that is root 4. Root 4 is nothing but 2. So 2. That is equal to root 2 value that is given that is 1.414. So divided by 2. So let us cancel. If you cancel this one or if you divide 1.414 by 2, we will get 0 0.707. So the answer is option B. 
Next problem. If f of x equal to x cube minus 1, then which of the following is a factor of f of x? So given that f of x equal to x cube minus 1, we need to find out which of the following is a factor of x cube minus 1. We can do this in two ways. We know that a cube minus b cube equal to a minus b times a square a b plus b square. Now if you write x cube minus 1 as x cube minus 1 cube, then that will be equal to x minus 1 times something you will get. You need not to think about that one. So x minus 1 is a factor of x cube minus 1. So option D is correct. Or we can do in another way also. If you take f of x equal to x cube minus 1, to check whether x minus 1 is a factor of f of x or not, we need to find out f of 1. So f of 1 equal to, plug in the value of x that is equal to 1. So 1 cube minus 1 which is equal to 1 cube, my, 1 cube means 1. So 1 minus 1 which is equal to 0. So we got f of 1 equal to 0. According to factor theorem, we can say that x minus 1 is a factor of f of x. So option D is correct. Next question number 8. Simplify 2 plus root 3 whole square minus 2 minus root 3 whole square. Before doing this problem, if you observe this one, this is of the form a plus b whole square minus a minus b whole square. So let us simplify this one first. a plus b whole square is a square plus 2ab plus b square. Then minus a minus b whole square is a square minus 2ab plus b square. If you simplify this one, that means if you open the brackets first, a square plus 2ab plus b square, then minus we have to open the second bracket. So change the signs of all these terms which are within the brackets. So minus a square plus 2ab minus b square. So here a square minus a square gets cancelled, b square minus b square gets cancelled. This is equal to 2ab plus 2ab that is equal to 4ab. Now 2 plus root 3 whole square minus 2 minus root 3 whole square. This is equal to 4ab means 4 into. If you compare the given expression with a plus b whole square minus a minus b whole square, then a is 2 and b is root 3. So the answer is 4 into a into b means 4 into 2 into root 3, which is equal to 8 root 3. So option D is correct. Next question. If the mean of 10, 12, 13, 17, k and 20 is 15, then find the value of k. What is the formula to find out the mean? Sum of observations by number of observations. That means sum of observations 10 plus 12 plus 13 plus 17 plus k plus 20 divided by how many observations we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 observations. This is given equal to, mean is given as that is equal to 15. Now, 13 plus 17 is 30, 30 plus 20, 50, 50 plus 10, 60, 60 plus 12, 72. So, 72 plus k divided by 6 equal to 15. So, 72 plus k equal to, send the 6 to right side, 15 times 6 is 90. So, k equal to 90 minus 72 which is equal to 18. So, the answer is D. 18 is the answer. Let us go to next problem. What is the value of 1 by 2 whole cube plus 1 by 3 whole cube minus 5 by 6 whole cube? The given expression is 1 by 2 whole cube plus 1 by 3 whole cube minus 5 by 6 whole cube. We can write this one as 1 by 2 whole cube plus 1 by 3 whole cube plus minus 5 by 6 or negative 5 by 6 whole cube. This looks like a cube plus b cube plus c cube. We know that if a plus b plus c equal to 0, then a cube plus b cube plus c cube equal to 3abc. So let us check whether a plus b plus c equal to 0 or not. What is a? 1 by 2 and b is 1 by 3 then plus c is negative 5 by 6. The LCM is 6, 2 times 3 is 6, so 3 times 1 is 3 in the numerator. Then 3 times 2 is 6, then 2 times 1 is 2. Then plus 6 times 1 is 6, so 1 into negative 5, so that is negative 5. 
This is equal to 3 plus 2 is 5, 5 plus negative 5 is 0. So 0 by 6 which is equal to 0. So as we got a plus b plus c equal to 0, we can write a cube plus b cube plus c cube equal to 3abc. So the answer is 3abc that is equal to 3 into a is 1 by 2, b is 1 by 3, c is negative 5 by 6. So we can cancel 3 and 3. This is equal to negative 5 by 2 times 6 is 12. So the answer is negative 5 by 12. Option D is correct. Next question. If we double each value of the data, then the mean of the data become. If we double each value of the data, then mean becomes, then mean also becomes double. So that means that will be twice to the original mean. So here, option C is correct. Twice the original mean. Right. Let's go to next problem. Which rational number exactly lies between 5 by 3 and negative 5 by 3? I think the question should be like this. Which rational number lies exactly between 5 by 3 and negative 5 by 3? Let me read again. Which rational number lies exactly between 5 by 3 and negative 5 by 3? The options are 0, 2 thirds, 1, negative 2 thirds. If you observe carefully, all these four numbers lie between 5 by 3 and negative 5 by 3. If you take a number line, suppose this is 0, here if you take negative 5 by 3, here if you take positive 5 by 3, 0 is there in between these two and 2 by 3 is also somewhere here, 2 by 3 and 1 will be somewhere, somewhere here, then negative 2 by 3 is somewhere here, negative 2 by 3. So all these are in between, this is 1. So all these numbers are in between negative 5 by 3 and positive 5 by 3. But what is the value which is exactly in between these two? That is nothing but 0. So option 0, that means option A is correct. Let us go to next problem. One angle is equal to 3 times its supplement. The measure of the angle is. So supplement, what is meant by supplement? If two angles are supplementary, when, when can we say two angles are supplementary angles? When the sum of two angles equal to 180 degrees, then we say those two angles are supplementary angles. Here one angle is equal to three times its supplement. One angle is equal to three times its supplement. Suppose is if the suppose if one angle is equal to then its supplement will be equal to three times. So 3x. We need to find out this angle. 3x we need to find out. So we know that sum of these two angles, 3x plus x equal to 180 degrees. Why? Because these two are supplementary angles. 3x plus x means 4x, 4x equal to 180 degrees, so x equal to 180 degree by 4, if you divide these two, we will get 45 degrees, but we need to find out 3x, so 3x equal to 3 times 45 degree, which is equal to 135 degrees, so option A is correct. Let us go to 14th problem. The remainder when a cubic polynomial is divided by a quadratic polynomial will be Suppose a cubic polynomial, suppose x cube plus 3x square, something like this, if it is being divided by a quadratic polynomial, suppose like x square plus 2x like this, then what will be the remainder? So if you divide this one, the remainder must be something like x plus something like this, like that you will get. So this is clearly a linear polynomial. So B, option B, linear polynomial is correct. Next one, which is not an irrational number out of these four options, which is not an irrational number. So first of all, what is an irrational number? The number which can't be written in P by Q form. That is what irrational number means. What type of numbers are irrational numbers? Square roots of non-perfect squares. That is first one. Second one, non-terminating, non-repeating decimal numbers, non-terminating non-repeating decimal numbers. Third one, transcendental numbers. Transcendental numbers are uh, pi, e like this. These are irrational numbers. Now observe. Option A, this is equal to, we can write this one as 0 0.3 bar and this can be written as 3 by 9 which is equal to 1 by 3. So clearly this is a rational number. So option A is correct in this case. Just for curiosity, let us check B, C, D also. B, one square root of 125, 125 is not a perfect square. 
So square root of 125 is an irrational number. 3 root 2, clearly root 2 is an irrational number. So 3 root 2 is also an irrational number. D, option D is pi. Pi, we know that pi is a transcendental irrational number. So only the number given in option A is a rational number. That means that is not an irrational number. With that, let us, do we have a doubt, right? Where is, where is question number 1, right? This is question number 1. You observe the question carefully. The question is incomplete. I didn't get the complete question, so I skipped this question. Sorry for the inconvenience. Hope you understand and hope you like my explanations. If you like my explanations, please subscribe my channel. Thank you. Thank you, Anandal. You are Skwana Kirandandi.